As part of the new national airspace system reforms, a single set of operating procedures will be introduced at all non-towered aerodromes around Australia. The procedures are proven and in use at over 12,000 aerodromes across the United States. They are simple to use and most importantly, safe. The new procedure is about standardising and improving the way we fly at non-towered aerodromes. There'll be more standard broadcasts and operating procedures, so no matter where you are in Australia, they'll always be the same. In the circuit, pilots will be encouraged to fly the altitude and spacing best suited to their aircraft's performance. This will enhance segregation and improve safety. In this program, we'll look at the changes and demonstrate a typical flight using the new procedures. Communication is an important part of the new system. The fundamental concept is to minimise pilot-to-pilot -pilot communications and to make standardised broadcasts that provide situational awareness for everyone in the aerodrome area. When making a broadcast, start with the name of the aerodrome, followed by the make and call sign of your aircraft. Then your intentions and finish again with the name of the aerodrome. Standardised broadcasts include taxiing, entering the runway, turning downwind base and final, and clear of the runway. Bathurst traffic, Cessna 152 Yankee Hotel Yankee, taxiing for circuits, runway 35 Bathurst. At busy aerodromes, particularly those used by airline aircraft, all aircraft must carry and use a radio. The en route supplement and the charts show this radio requirement with an R in brackets after the frequency. When operating at aerodromes and landing sites without a published frequency, monitor and make the appropriate broadcasts on the Multicom frequency, 126.7. While general operating procedures are the same at all non-towered aerodromes, local variations may exist. For example, at some aerodromes, right-hand circuits may be required on some runways for terrain clearance or noise abatement. So always check NOTAMs, the en route supplement and other relevant documents as part of your pre-flight preparation. Point. Position the aircraft so you have a clear view of the circuit. Bathurst traffic, X-ray Papa Zulu is turning downwind from way 35. Touch and go. A 172 has just called turning downwind. I have them in sight and there's plenty of time for me to backtrack and take off before they turn final. So a check of base and final. There's no one conducting a straight in approach. A quick check that there's no one landing from the opposite direction and we're right to go. Bathurst traffic, Cessna 152 Yankee Hotel Yankee, entering and backtracking runway 35 for circuits Bathurst. Landing and anti-collision lights should be switched on at all times in the circuit. If you have a transponder, it should be on mode C. On upwind, Maintain runway heading until within 300 feet of your circuit altitude. So if you're doing a 1,000 foot circuit, climb to 700 feet AGL before turning crosswind. At Bathurst, our circuit altitude is 3,400 feet, so I'm climbing to 3,100 before I turn crosswind. I've just levelled out at 3,400 feet, Bathurst's circuit altitude. A good spacing for a fixed gear single engine aircraft is about three quarters of a mile from the runway. If I was flying a faster aircraft like a Navajo, I'd make a slightly wider circuit. But in a single engine aircraft, I'd like to be at a distance that will allow me to complete a glide approach should I have an engine failure in the circuit. It's a good idea to make the broadcast just before you turn. Other aircraft will have a specific area in the circuit to look for you as traffic, and banking aircraft are easier to see. Bathurst traffic, Cessna 152 Yankee Hotel Yankee, turning downwind, runway 35 Bathurst.
I'm established on downwind now. I've completed my pre-landing checks. And I need to think about whether I need to adjust my speed or circuit spacing to accommodate other traffic. Faster aircraft might need to slow down, fly a slightly wider circuit, or even extend downwind to fit in with the traffic flow. Bathurst traffic, Cessna, Bravo, Alpha Charlie, turning base runway 35 Bathurst. I've heard the broadcast by the other pilot, and I know where to look. That's radio alerted, see and avoid. I don't need to talk to the other pilot. In BMC, radio alerted, see and avoid, with pilots making short, succinct broadcasts, is the best way to ensure situational awareness. That's an important change from the practice of using radio arranged for separation. Bathurst traffic, Cessna 152 Yankee Hotel Yankee, turning base runway 35 Bathurst. On base, continue scanning for traffic. Pay particular attention to final approach. Aircraft might be conducting a straight-in approach or an instrument approach. Aircraft that are conducting a straight-in approach will usually join at a five-mile final. Bathurst traffic, Cessna 152 Yankee Hotel Yankee, turning final runway 35, touch and go Bathurst. On final, clear both sides of final approach and check that the runway is also clear of traffic. When departing the circuit after takeoff, climb on the extended centre line to circuit altitude. If you want to make a turn that conforms with the circuit direction, you can make a 45 degree turn immediately and continue. When departing the circuit after takeoff, climb on the extended centre